And you are listening to On the Record with Tiffany. And today I have two of my favorite people, um, former HUD secretary, Henry Cisneros, our former mayor and community activist and civil rights activist. I mean, what, what else? My goodness, you have a long, long bio, Henry Cisneros, <laughs> and his beautiful wife. And when, when I say beautiful, I don't mean just outside, but I mean on the inside, uh, Mary Alice Cisneros. Mary Alice is somebody who has, when, when my day job, during my day job, I'm, I'm a, um, also a community activist, but I, I work with healthcare, with Texas Kidney Foundation. And uh, Mary Alice actually walked through, through the flea market with me to, to uh, translate for me as we were <laughs> trying to get people to get screened for kidney disease. I mean, this is somebody who's not just uh, talking to people about supporting our community, but she's actually a part of the effort, boots on the ground, supporting uh, our community and the people of our community, the least of these. We always talk about that. So I'm, I'm honored to have Henry and Mary Alice Cisneros with me this morning. How are y'all doing? Doing well, and thank you for having us. Um, it's a treat to be on your show, and I'm so pleased that the community can be informed by your platform there. Uh, but I'm also pleased that the community gets to know your personality and your uh, energy level and your enthusiasm, <laughs> intelligence, and dedication the way we have. Uh, you're one of the special people of San Antonio, and I say that advisedly because I, I've i known a lot of folks in San Antonio over the years since we entered public life in the 1970s, mid-70s, and uh, I've got to say you light up a room when you walk in. So oh, Tiffany, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, I wanted to talk with you and Mary Alice about um, what's going on with COVID-19 and everything that we're experiencing, but uh, first... I'd like to uh, talk about a fallen hero, and that is uh, Congressman John Lewis. Can you tell us what he meant to you? Well, first of all, um, I had the privilege to know uh, Congressman John Lewis. Um, I've served on several panels with him where he and I were to discuss uh, civil rights in the country from the African-American perspective and from the Latino perspective. And I've also worked with him in his role as a congressman for Atlanta, for Georgia, from Georgia. Uh, when I was secretary, uh, that was the years that the Olympics was held in Atlanta in 1996. So uh, the congressman had a, a serious role within the Atlanta community and uh, uh, we worked very closely together. He's a wonderful man, and all the descriptions that I've heard this weekend about uh, the keeper of the flame, the keeper of the ideals, the person who never, ever wavered um, in his belief of how justice would occur, but also brought a sense of hope and idealism and the future uh, would be better. Uh, if, if there's one central theme that runs through him, it's a never ending optimism. It's a never ending sense of uh, that America will rise up to her responsibilities and, and be an inclusive place. He believed it in his heart. He helped make it possible. And though we're not there, as we know from recent events, uh, John Lewis took us a long way. Uh, this is a young man who was absolutely, totally dedicated to the idea of opening up this nation, and he did so as a very young man yeah. uh, on the Freedom Rides uh, early on. And uh, then he joined with Dr. King, much to the dismay of some of the students who wanted a more kind of radical uh, uh, voice. But John Lewis concluded that that peaceful protest, nonviolence, the, the Gandhi method, if you will, uh, led by Dr. King, was the right road. 
and he studied theology and became a minister himself and never ever wavered uh believed in people their inherent good their potential uh and fought for it and he never never stopped he was very difficult to be on a panel with because first of all you're with a an iconic figure when you're sitting next to him and no matter what i have done in my life it never ever will amount the same as marching from selma to montgomery and getting getting uh, mm -hmm. beaten on the edmund pettus bridge and uh, then spending a lifetime in the movement uh so it's intimidating uh, but but then to be around his kind of irrepressible sense of destiny and history um you're right uh, we have lost a hero and one who uh, our young people would be wise to emulate um so we 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 we, uh, we really need to stop and reflect for a moment of one of the great ones so we yeah. give our condolences to the family yes more importantly also to the community that will miss him that know and understand that there were truly fighters at the beginning and we will continue his fight here not only in in this state of texas and all that is uh, happening with black lives matter and all of those issues but for the continuation of the next generation to also help uh, as we go forth oh i i feel exactly the same way as the two of you like for me uh as an african-american woman and as the uh, as a leader of a statewide organization i wouldn't be sitting in the position that i sit in were it not for john lewis and the movement uh that he led along with dr king and that he was so integral to i, I wouldn't be sitting here I wouldn't have the opportunities that I have today were it not for John Lewis, Dr. King, you, Henry, if it weren't for people who stood when everybody else was falling, we wouldn't have the opportunities that we have today. African Americans wouldn't, Latino Americans wouldn't. We would not have these opportunities. You know, so uh, when I think about him, I think about uh, what kind of movement this was, because it was a moral movement. It was a spiritual movement. It was, you know, people talk about warriors. No, I, I always say that we're, like with the kidney community, we're kidney crusaders, because this is a spiritual and a moral movement. Right. Not, it is not one that we have to be combative about, because the true, uh, the true fight, if you will, is is within a human being. It is your soul that we're that we're battling for, and it takes more than than just brute strength to do that. Yeah. So, um, and I'm so very pleased, Tiffany, that you focused on this, but also that we're 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 we live in San Antonio, and it's a city mm -hmm. with an unusual linkage to uh, Atlanta and the civil rights movement. Uh, first of all, there's a substantial African-American community in San Antonio, as we know. That's right. Uh, hence, the uh, largest annual celebration of Dr. King every year is our Martin Luther King Day March here, which has as many as 100,000, sometimes 150,000 people participating. That's right. It's a glorious moment. It's one of my favorite moments in San Antonio year in and year out. Uh, and I must say, uh, to pick up on your point, there's so many people who have benefited from the civil rights movement that, that, that uh, John Lewis was so important a part of, women and the glass ceiling issues, disabled people and the opening up of doors that were not possible. LGBT people live in a completely different society than was the case before. Yes. Uh, obviously, the African American community with major, major strides. We've had an African American president of the United States. We have a long way to go, but that that was no small achievement. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, the Latino community here, which uh, has benefited mightily 
uh, San Antonio became the cradle. It became the, the launching point for a number of organizations that were modeled on the African-American civil rights movement, like the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Education Fund, which was modeled on the NAACP's Legal Defense Fund, like the Southwest Voter Registration Project here, which was modeled on John Lewis's Voter Education Project in uh, the South. So you can just go down the line and see how we watched and we learned and 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 but it all comes stems from that that wonderful small cadre of heroes, one of whom we just lost, who taught us uh, what America's constitutional and moral obligations were and how we needed to hold this country to that creed. And um, and and so we. we we, we thank John Lewis for a lifetime of sacrifice and work. And, and I'm going to end on that note, end this segment on that note, and just ask my listeners and tell you that you got to come back with uh, Henry and Mary Alice Cisneros and listen to how they handled COVID-19 as a family, because that's a, a very timely um, an important topic right now as we watch our numbers rise here in in Texas. Uh, There are things that we can do as individuals. And uh, once again, um, our condolences to John Congressman Lewis's family. And uh, thank you to Congressman Lewis for the life that you led and for the trail that you blazed and for what you have shown us as Americans, that we are a great nation. And the only way that we could lose our greatness is if we lose our spirit and our soul. And uh, John Lewis was a big part of that spirit and soul. And I know that we'll continue on with that. His legacy lives on in the rest of No doubt. And you've been listening to On the Record with Tiffany.